Hello. Getting a robust app is a well-known challenge these days. It is an acute task if the app is supposed to be installed on various devices that are running under various operating systems. The key ingredient of a strong app is a comprehensive testing procedure. On the other hand, the market requires to have a cost-effective development process to get maximum return on investment. With that being said, I would like to concentrate in my presentation on addressing these two challenges. Let me introduce myself. My name is Ivan Koftinov. I'm a quality assurance engineer of Exadil with five year experience of testing hybrid mobile applications. This presentation is the product of the work of many contributors. I would like to express my gratitude to them for their great help. Let's start with some basics. Each time we begin testing, various real-world constraints show up. Those limitations relate to our testing subject, supported devices, operating systems, and so on. This chart basically shows three types of apps, web, hybrid, and native. It means that there is a need to deal with all these types to get a robust cross-platform app at the end. Now we can continue with the testing of web apps and afterwards we will go through the others. There are various frameworks on the market. These frameworks are to deal with the software testing. The slide lists commercial and free frameworks. Some of them are more popular while others are less. QTP which stands for Hello Packard Quick Test Professional, is one of the earliest automation testing framework. It relies on largely obsolete Windows-only technologies such as ActiveX and VBScript, which is not an object-oriented language. Another testing tool is Sequoli. It automates anything you see on the screen. Sequoia uses image recognition to identify and control GUI components. It is useful when there is no easy access to a GUI's internal or source code. With mentioning of these honorable tools, I want to bring your attention to the most popular tool of nowadays. It is Selenium. For example, Zephyr's 2015 survey says that 42% of responders stated that they were using Selenium for test automation. The most popular tool after Selenium was QTP at 9%. Selenium is probably the best option for the automated testing of web apps today. It is becoming increasingly popular and it is the first choice of automation testers. Written in Java, Selenium accepts comments and sends them to a browser. It makes it possible to write automated tests for a web application in many programming languages, which allows for better integration of Selenium in existing unit test frameworks. This is implemented through a browser-specific browser driver web driver, which sends comments to a browser and retrieves the results. Most browser drivers actually launch and access a browser application such as Fireworks or Chrome. In other words, it controls the browser by directly communicating to it. The web driver object triggers real events in the browser, mouse clicks, button clicks, entering text, drag and drop and many other events from keyboard or mouse. Basically, say it can emulate any user browser activity. Let's drill down into the technical details of Selenium. This is the first automated web testing tool that allowed users to use programming languages they prefer. As of version 2.25.0, Selenium can support the following programming languages such as Java, C Sharp, Python, Ruby. Perl and PHP. There are various innovative companies that have built products on top of Selenium to offer more value to its clients, as Sauce Labs, Browser Stack, and so forth. 
The Selenium team is working hard and fast to come up with more capabilities, features, and also standardized browser and mobile browser automation support. As well, all issues are addressed in a timely manner. The community support, in my opinion, is awesome. If the Selenium core contributors cannot answer in time, there is a huge amount of experts in the community. It's quite possible someone has encountered something similar and the ideas, suggestions, workarounds come in fast numbers. On the other hand, Selenium has some disadvantages. Frankly speaking, I cannot be positive that these disadvantages drastically impacted my past activities. Anyway, each browser requires a driver to execute tests. The tool has a built-in driver to bridge with Firefox. Unfortunately, Chrome, Safari and Internet Explorer aren't supported out of the box, but the drivers are available and can be fairly easily installed. The second issue can be addressed outside of the given tool. SQLy supports rich functionality for the image-based testing. Regarding the third issue, I need to say that there is no built-in integrated development environment, but users can write up almost any IDE of their choice, for example, IntelliJ IDEA or Eclipse. The last disadvantage I would like to point out is that there is no built-in report generation tool. If this functionality is critically important, TestNG, JUnit or similar tools can be used. We've gone through the frameworks which were designed to test the web apps and now it's a time to demonstrate the tools that can be used for the mobile apps testing. I need to say that open source and commercial tools are in profusion on the market as well. It adds a certain level of complexity to our task. In addition to it, the testing subject can be divided into two groups, native and hybrid. On top of that, the operating systems come in two flavors, at least, such as iOS and Android. And here comes the challenge. On one hand, there is a need to have a comprehensive test procedure. On another hand, the cost of the testing soars up high with all the aforementioned versions. The recipe of a success story is very simple. It is a single set of test scenarios that can fit various operating systems and devices. Moreover, it is expected that the tool doesn't require highly skilled engineers. Here in Exodel, our quality assurance engineers employ a synergy of Appium and Selenium bridged via web driver API to close the deal. I would like to demonstrate this chart in order to bolster the employment. Calabash, for instance, can be used for testing of Android and iOS apps, but its scripting options are limited to Ruby. Another tool, CellAndroid, can be used for testing Android apps only. The bottom line is that the Appium and Selenium, which are bridged via WebDriver API, are the only tools that meet all the requirements. Let's take a quick look at Appium. First of all, it is an open source library which can be used to automate testing of native mobile web and hybrid applications that are under iOS and Android platforms. Appium was designed to fit the mobile automation needs in accordance with the following four tenets. Number one, there is no need to recompile an app or modify it in any way in order to automate it. Number two, there is no need to be locked into a specific language or framework to write and run tests. Number three, a mobile automation framework shouldn't reinvent the wheel when it comes to automation APIs. And number four, a mobile automation framework should be open source in spirit and practice as well as in name. Nice words. 
Let's see in details if we can kill two birds with one stone. All good things might come to an end. Let me tell you about some disadvantages that this tool has. For iOS, you can't run Appium on Mac OS 10.7 or lower version. So if you are still in the Stone Age, it makes sense to shift back to the future in order to use this tool. And of course, iOS is the Apple's child. And Appium needs some Xcode tools and libraries that can be used only on Mac. It means that a Mac computer or at least virtual machine would be required here. Appium supports Android 4.2 and up. It looks like it is not a big issue since the market share of this flavor is less than 7%. Over and above, the installation procedure is not well documented yet. Initially, it takes a while to ensure the first handshake between Appium and Selenium. Here, I would like to hit some relevant technical details of the tool. Appium can create and handle multiple web driver sessions. The chart shows us that Appium receives connections from a client, listens to the comments, executes these comments on a mobile device, and replies with an HTTP response. So, those comments are sent into device via specific actions. These comments are user interactions with the device, such as button clicking, screen swiping, scrolling it into a specific area. This action is pretty much the same as Selenium interacts with the web apps. The chart shows that a single test script can validate iOS, Android, and web apps almost simultaneously. A visual demonstration is worth a thousand words, and now it is a time for an action. Our test subject is a hybrid mobile app developed by Exodol. We used a Samsung Galaxy S4 run by Android 5.0.1 and an iPhone 5S run by iOS 9.3.2. The devices are hooked up to a computer. Our test scenario is very short for the sake of simplicity and it verifies a sign-in procedure. Now Selenium and Appium are starting. The test script is being sent to the platforms. Voila! The test is running. And one more thing. It is expected that Selenium 3 will be introduced pretty soon. The aim for the Selenium 3 is a tool for the user-friendly automation of mobile and web apps. What does this mean? For mobile users, the Selenium project will be hosting a number of tests to facilitate interaction in between many different projects available, which are extending the Web Driver API in order to co-op with the mobile devices. With that being said, as a de facto standard, Selenium can soon be declared as the de jure W3C standard. So, Selenium can become as a Swiss army knife. It's gorgeous! That's it for now. Thank you very much for your time. Please feel free to contact Exodol's representatives to get more details about our quality assurance services. Have fun!